No, well, I've got some different keys, actually, this Saturday. The keys that allow me to come into the gallery of TC7, our swap shop studio here at the Television Centre. I'm not on the floor, sitting in the usual chair. I'm up here in the director's seat. And hopefully the opening titles are ready on VT6, are they? The man downstairs is ready to go. We're ready to go here. Run the opening titles for Swap Shop. Nine, eight, And a little seven, bit later in the programme, we shall be coming up five, here, wandering around four, through the various sections three, and seeing how this show two, gets on one, the air. Zero. On air. I said yeah, the gallery is way up above the uh, studio floor. I meant it. This is the climb down to the bottom of our studio here. And I'm going to take it easy because many, many people have, in fact, managed to fall down those stairs on their way to the studio. Good morning. I hope this Saturday finds you fit and well. I can assure you that we have a really exciting program lined up with our mobile camera. We're going to be shooting all over the place here, having a look behind the scenes. You should, you should feel the tension up there. They've all had their Carmen rollers in and doing makeup to look pretty. <laughs> Some of the girls have been doing it as well. Uh, the phone people this morning, as always, 01 811 <laughs> ready to take your calls. And we've got a great lineup of guests. And as I said right at the very beginning of the show, we've got all sorts of things to cram in today. Barry Took will be here with Points of View, and we've got Peter Duncan from Blue Peter. He's dropped in as well. And as you will have seen at the beginning of the programme, I was up in the studio gallery, way up there, and we have our mobile camera this particular week and we're going to be going up into the gallery right after the cartoon. Now you might have seen me waving this around at various points during the series of Swap Shop and what it allows me to do is to run a piece of film which in fact comes from another part of the building entirely but when I press this button here which I shall do as a practice it makes a light go on on the director's desk that light is actually on the desk in the gallery and if the shop pulls out a little bit, you can see some telephones and things. And that's the gallery, where I'll be going in just a little while. That's Chris Bellinger, you can see on the left-hand side. He's directing today's programme, and he's probably wondering <laughs> why I didn't call him Sir or something posher. Lord, uh, I'll press it for real this time. The light goes on, and that means Battle of the Planets is coming, and it's coming for Ian Prudence Seven, and all the others six, in the children's ward at Ingham four, Infirmary three, in South Shields, two, and, of course, for one, Emma Craven zero. as well. Ah, oh, that lightweight oil. There's nothing like it to relax your thermocouples after a hard day at the binary automatic analyzer. Thank you, no. Well, when uh, we actually mention the subject of the swap shop team, you probably think of Keith and Maggie and John and myself, but here's an opportunity with our handheld camera, which Ian is operating, for you to see live on BBC One, the entire team. I'm in the lighting gallery here, and Clive Thomas, Clive, you're in charge of this area. My sins, yes. It's, a, it's an amazing area. Your three colleagues, would you like to introduce us? Well, and there is, uh, in fact, uh, Colin. Uh, he's a student yeah. engineer. Hello, Colin. He looks after the, uh, the colour balance of the cameras. He balances the colour of the cameras. He makes sure that the colour on all cameras matches, in fact. So, so he's got good eyesight. Videos. I actually think so, yes. <laughs> Uh, it's Chris, yep. uh, the vision operator. Hi, Chris. Uh, he looks after the uh, exposure of the cameras, uh, make sure they all match the same, and also the brightness as well. So that is, that's not actually done by the cameraman, Chris. You, you no. remotely, so to yeah. speak, can alter the iris to the camera. Yes. And uh, how do you know, you know that they're all set up exactly the same? Do you have a standard? Yeah, at the start of the day, we, uh, we point them at a chart so that we know that they're all starting at the same level. Fine. Um, and what have we got at this end? Because this really does look incredibly impressive. Well, this, uh, I hope you, you can get new, a picture um, of the computerised the lighting console. Mike's operating it. This is one of the newest ones in the television it's centre. It's brand new, in fact, this one. It's indeed, yes, newest one. Well, and can you give us a demonstration of how this panel works? Well, if Carol can cut to camera two, if possible, uh, Mike will go through the various changes we, in fact we can do. Just uh, various patterns, hard patterns and soft ones. Go through to them. And the um, combination of both. And there we are. Terrific. Is this a fairly simple program to do in terms of the lighting it's gallery? It's difficult because it's live, you see. Yeah. There's no rehearsal. So, so, as the viewers at home see it, it's as we see it. Can we just see, I don't know whether you can get under there, Ian, and see the, the lighting. All the lights sit up in the roof 
of the studio, of course, as you see on many shots. And uh, you can do a few changes, man, to show the. Uh, that is a panel so that you can actually tell which lights you've got on. Indeed, that yeah, shows the um, geography of the studio in terms of lighting. Terrific. Thank you very much, Clive. Tremendous. Thank you, gentlemen. And now uh, a walk through into the area which uh, we call the gallery. And you might have heard a voice just then, which is that of Chris Bellinger, who we uh, met just before Battle of the Planets. Uh, normally this area is very much darker than it is now. It's got extra lighting in it so that we can see what's going on. John Barnacle is at this end. John, what do you do? This looks equally impressive with all the buttons. Well, these are the control lines through to the various telecine channels, VT channels which are actually you know, a different part of the building to yes. where we are. So the circuits have to be routed into here and I've got control through to them. I've got control line through to the outside broadcast point. There's organising a news VT at the moment. Um, I've got control line through to CAR, that's and the main network control. Mm -hmm. So you're so, busy sort of almost plugging up but with buttons. You're yes, I'm just looking it all after in. mainly the... In fact, there's one going there. What, what does that I'll mean? That. That's Peterborough calling us at the moment. I'm probably watching us on all the... All right, well, uh, you, you take network. that one. <laughs> and uh, hello to Chris, who normally is a, a long way away from me. We that's saw right. how the light works. Oh, yes. It worked all right this morning. It did. <laughs> For once. Uh, Chris, what does a director do? Well, <laughs> panics a bit. <laughs> no, it's, it's... On a show like this, a live, unrehearsed show, it's very exhilarating. It's great fun. And you've got a team like this? No problems. No, it's all... And you've got telephones where you can telephones, uh, I talk can... to various places? Occasionally I can talk to you, if yeah. I need to, by pressing that. And if that rings on the desk, no, hopefully John there. Craven... Actually, maybe John he... Craven's down there. Is he on that desk? Yeah. He's well, running up... Let's <laughs> cut to three. Oh, it's his big moment. Hello. Hello, yes. We're just checking the phone's work. Yes. Right. Yes, it oh. does. It rang. Are you lonely? Quite lonely. Oh, right. Yes, it's... <laughs> What's it like up there? Well, it's pretty busy. Oh, good. Okay. Right. See you later. <laughs> right. Bye-bye. Bye. And how do you tie together with, for example, the outside broadcast, which we can see on one of the monitors here? How yes. do you, how do you set happy. all that up? Well, I've got a, a switch talk back here. Oh, yeah. they're all talking away. But I can actually talk to the director, Chris Tandy, mm -hmm. who's in a scanner out in the wild. And so he's in a, big, in a big van. He's in a big van, which um, has got something like this, smaller, smaller version of what we have here. Hello, Keith. Is that Chris Bellinger? If I... <laughs> Yes, you're on the air, Keith. Mind what you say. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hi, Keith. Yeah, you're right. Let's, yeah. let's lose the OB sound for the, just for the moment. And if I press this button, I can actually talk to the director, Chris Tandy. Hello, Chris. Are you there? Yes. Hello, London. It's a bit uh, wet and miserable, but we're surviving. Thank you. Good. Well, it's looking good for the moment. I can see a boat floating about. More boats to come later, I hope. Look forward to it. OK, I'm back. Splendid. So you can check with them before, we, before I say over to you, Keith. You've chatted to them. Just Check to see they're happy and everything's right. going to work right. And we've got Sandy and Debbie here. Uh, uh, Sandy right. at the beginning busy shouting out numbers. Keep the timing of the whole thing. Certainly, yeah. It's got to keep you in control. And try and get the programme out bang on time, on time so Frank Boff doesn't get upset. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and we run into grandstand. And is that it? That's what a director does. Well, near enough. Uh, I've got a lot of monitors here showing me lots of pictures and it's really up to me to tie them all together, mm -hmm. to warn everyone what's happening in the programme, to to try and forewarn them what we're going to do next and then apologise when it goes wrong. Yeah. Um, if we have a look at this, the monitor stack, Ian. So this is Chris this actually directing, directing himself. This is, this is a very confusing, potentially confusing situation. A very difficult situation. All these monitors here are all the different feeds of uh, what we're going to show uh, uh, Swap Shop viewers. Mm -hmm. We've got um, four cameras. In fact, we've got five this morning because five is the one that is the behind us yes. now. Uh, I've got a monitor which shows us Telecine, mm -hmm. which is the film projector. Uh, a monitor which shows me what's on the videotape machine. And that's what was flicking up just then, was the, was the film? That was the film, which is lining up, up. Uh, at the next item. And you keep shouting at this lady sitting next to you. I do, I keep shouting at Carol. <laughs> Carol, good because morning. Because it's up to Carol to cut from one to the other to make it look nice. So although you decide what pictures we see from the sort of selection here... That's right. Carol does the actual physical thing of pressing the buttons. That's right. Could you run through for us without obviously taking off camera five? Yes, well, that's the problem in this situation like this. But we can actually put ourselves around the outside of a picture and just cheat by putting in a quarter of the frame there, the output of this side of the equipment, yeah. which will allow me to show you what I can do. There's a row of buttons here, each mm -hmm. of which is fed with one of the cameras, one to camera one to five, and then the other four channels have actually three channels in this case, have got telecine and videotape and the OB. Right. And I can cut 
directly between the cameras and the other things we have on the show. Or, as each button's got... That's not a very good one, I use that one. As each button's got a fader attached to it, I can fade the pictures up and down, mm -hmm. or by crossing two over, mix the pictures together. Which is a much softer way of going from one yes, shot to if, the other. Yes, if it's a nice sort of gentle end to a film or something. Um, and there's one other... The other major thing we can do on, on a desk like this is if we lose ourselves for a moment, yeah. we can actually do a thing which is called a wipe, and we can do that in lots of different oh. shapes and patterns and according to what we're going in and out of. And we use quite a lot of that on this show because it's, um, because it's pop music and... and uh, oh, that's quite nice. <laughs> how, do I, how do I get out of that, she says? <laughs> That's what I was going to ask. This looks incredibly complicated. Do you ever get lost? Uh, yes, no, depending on the show. Never. Yes. No, well, we have, you know, our director... It doesn't happen very often, though, does it? Well, as long as you say what we expect you to say, then, then, <laughs> then we're all right. I hate to think what language goes on up here. Well, that's just about it in this section, really, it isn't is. it? Why don't you go and have a look at sound? Yep. Yeah. Well, so uh, we've seen the lighting. We've seen the way in which the pictures are selected and the team behind... Uh, the selection of those pictures. We'll come to that area in just a little while, but follow me through, because in here we've got sound. Now, every now and again you will hear strange sound effects and little noises are played in, and it's a team with an amazing sense of humour here, led by John. John, Hello. good morning. It's very nice to be able to come into your kingdom. This looks an incredibly complicated panel, even worse than, than the one that Carol has got. It looks like the sort of things you see in pop VTs of studio mixes and things. Yes, it's a very similar device, actually. Um, forgive me if I don't look at you when I'm speaking to you. I've got to watch the volume of the sound on my meter there. So you're getting a meter so reading. So I've got a, a control of the microphone we have in here, which is this one. Mm -hmm. And by altering these controls, I can alter the volume of your mic, which is that one. And well, I'm, not, one. I'm not using that one, in fact. No, you're using the little one that's So it's on to there. You. So if I keep talking and you fade me out, then my People voice won't hear just, you, yes. just so vanish you'll away. hear a little bit from there, but right. not at all from uh, your main microphone. So I'll fade it up again, and I use these controls basically to select whatever sound is required. If Carol cuts the picture of the telecine, the film machine, I have to select the sound on the appropriate controls yes. to match it. Right. And we can hear the OB and uh, see John Craven, hear John Craven when we see him. How many microphones would you be in charge of in the studio? Oh, I should think about um, seven or eight in this particular production, yes. That's uh, another chance to get very confused. What about the sound aspect of our phone calls? Because that's yes, an, I've got the six phone one. lines here, uh, which I use. I select each call as it's offered to me from Joe over here. I don't know whether you can get a shot of him. He lines up the calls um, with the, the viewers who phone in and <laughs> does a technical lineup to make sure we're going to hear him hear the call correctly mm -hmm. and that uh, we know which particular call it is. You see how much he concentrates because he's got a Rubik cube there. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have very much time to play with us. And the side over here? The side over here, if I move back, is the um, contributions from quarter-inch tape machines and uh, which are mounted behind you when we play the closing music and um, the uh, any sound effects and uh, yeah. like that. those are the gentlemen behind us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, gentlemen. Yes. All oh, right. Well, that that's absolutely terrific. And one last thing, because we get a lot of uh, questions, a lot of people who watch the program write in and say, why do I have bits hanging out of me? But this is a, a radio microphone, and on here we've got the transmitter section That's of right. it. And this is what receives it. This is the other end, and uh, there's a whole load of cables down here, and that all plugs into here as well, Yes, that it? goes into, in fact, this control here. So uh, that is Thank actually you. the output of that receiver is going to that control, and the little black thing on the top is the aerial receiving the transmission from your pocket. Great. Lighting, we've worked out how we get all the pictures and how we select them. We've had sound. John, thank you. OK, pleasure. The thing that makes Swap Shop that little bit extra special is the ability for you, wherever you are in the UK, if you can get hold of a telephone, to give us a ring. And if we go through into this area, we can follow that selection process. Poor old Ian having to walk backwards. Mind the step. You're all right there. And in here we've got Nick and Mike. What exactly do you do, gentlemen? Well, this is callback. Um, when the calls are selected, um, they come through on the phones downstairs. They come through Kathy there, who selects the calls. This is the six lines we use to actually call them back. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, they go through to the sound room, which you've just seen. Fine. Uh, and this is a great area to chat to the people to get their confidence, basically. Yes. Instead of going on the air directly to you, 
they actually have a chance to have a quiet word with us. Yes, it's something it's easy to then forget. Then they're suddenly it's not thrown on television. Yeah. Yes, which is the worst thing. Right, Ian, the final part of our journey, which takes us through into this area, and the lady who has to go through all the uh, sheets which we've shown before Thank now, you. show you how the phone people downstairs write out your calls, the name at the top, and various details on there. Kath, how many of these do you reckon you get through? Oh, hundreds and hundreds. They come up here and Val pre-selects them and then I make a final selection and it's on the information that we get here that we choose the calls that go on the air. We want a balance of boys and girls and interesting questions, really. Terrific. And how many uh, calls are we averaging? Sort of a thousand a morning or something? Yes, but on, on the air, however many we can fit in a programme, it often depends how many other interesting things there are to see. Right. Say. Well, just this side of Cathy, if you can get through here, Ian. We've got Bob. Now, Bob works a machine called Riley. Um, I think it's called Riley because yep. it's, it's a commercial, a commercial name, commercial isn't it? Name. Um, now, when you see lots of little things appear at the bottom of the screen, little messages and names that say the names of the callers, or there we have Barry Took, uh, this machine produces it. Could you just show us how you work it, Bob? I won't print it up and print it out. And that's the way it runs up. And in that sense, it's got a memory because yes. you've already fed that information in. Oh yes, I've got my names up. Uh, regular things like what? The phone number you've got phone that number, on a yes. certain. Which one's that on? Uh, page eight. Nine. And that will come yes. 018118055. Yes, and I'll put the calls in when they come through from next door. Right, and if you've got to put up one just sort of off the top of your head, put up Bob, for example. That's a straight typing job. Yes. That's terrific. Thank you. Nerve-wracking moments? Is yeah, there's th some, yes. Yes, probably when yeah, I'm standing well. right behind you is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, uh, that's our little run around the studio. Well, this, this part of the studio. It just shows you, it's great being me, because it's a lot quieter down on the ground, and all these people are busy working like mad here. And hopefully someone will tell me what comes next, because I've completely forgotten. Obi, we're going to go to the outside <laughs> broadcast right now. Over to Keith. <laughs>